Um, we will read, our, our scripture is, uh, reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. I'll read. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the servants, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Amen. Lord Father, may we receive your word today um, with open hearts and speak to us, um, cultivate us, challenge us, um, shake us, And may you put your word deeply in our hearts today. And may we walk out following, obeying, living out your word today. Holy Spirit, may you do your work in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So continuing from last week, uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthians about giving financial help to the believers in Jerusalem. Uh, we talked about why uh, they needed to give and also why we too need to give and why we need to help and care for one another as one body in Christ. We, we talked about how Christ himself, who became poor, to make us rich. And in that, we need to follow his, his examples as his children. And, and today in our passage, Paul continues on and talks about the attitude we need to have as we give for the need for others. Verse 7, it says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, we need to give, and we need to do this cheerfully. Uh, We need to give with a joyful attitude. And in our passage, it says God loves a cheerful giver. God himself delights in a cheerful giver. Well, what does that mean, right? Like, to be a cheerful giver. It means that you give willingly. You give joyfully. You give with all your heart. It's not just about, you know, uh, acting of giving, but it's really what's inside. It's the attitude. You know, we can so give, right? But, you know, have you ever experienced this, like, something like you, you're giving, but your heart is not there, right? You're giving, but <laughs> you're detached from your heart, you know, willingness is zero, not, not there. Um, you just do it because maybe you have to. Um, and because of your obligation or because of your expectations or pressure, you know, you, you do it. And Well, in our passage, Paul points out to the Corinthians that we are not to give 
we are to give, sorry, we are to give not reluctantly or under compulsion. Not because simply you have to. The word reluctantly literally means, you know, from grief, sadness, you know, out of sorrow and, and, and distress. It's like you're giving, but you are so sad. You're, you're like, it's a painful experience to give. Like, oh my gosh, I have to give, <laughs> right? It's so difficult to give. Why? Well, maybe because, you know, there's worry and anxiety uh, about, about your future. I'm like, I need this for myself. I need, I need this to, in order to sustain my life. And I'm not going to give. I can't give. You need, I need to give. Lord, why are you taking this away, right? It's sad. It grieves you. How am I going to survive without this? Or maybe you're reluctant because you think that, you know, you're giving up. What is yours? You feel like you're being robbed. This is mine. Don't take what is mine, right? So, like, feel like you need to give, like, oh, it saddens you. Like, no, why? So with that, obviously, you know, giving reluctantly is the opposite of cheerfulness. And how about giving under compulsion? This is giving out of obligation, out of pressure, out of necessity. And, you know, what are some of the obligations that can drive us in giving? Well, Pastor John Piper uh, mentioned two things. You know, many people feel like they need to give to avoid punishment. You know, like, God said, give, and I want to obey because I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> like, God's going to punish me if I don't do this. And so, you know, that's out of compulsion, under compulsion, like obligation. Second, that, you know, many people feel that they need to give maybe to get people's praise. Uh, they, they want to look like a good Christian uh, in front of people. I, I want other people to think of me uh, as, a, as a good Christian. Um, and so those are all a part of giving under compulsion. Like you're doing it out of pressure, out of obligation, out of necessity. Um, but the heart is not at the right place. And in our passage today teaches us that God doesn't just look at our action, but He searches within our hearts and our motives. God does not delight in us giving reluctantly or under compulsion. He delights and He loves the cheerful giver. So then, what are the attributes of a cheerful giver? Uh, I'm going to talk about three things. First, a cheerful giver acknowledges God as a provider. Verse 10. He who supplies his seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multi multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So a cheerful giver knows that God is the one who supplies our seed for sowing and our bread for food. God is our supplier. He is our provider and he is our good father who knows our needs. So when we give to others in obedience to the Holy Spirit, moving in our hearts, you know, we don't do it uh, reluctantly. We don't have to worry about, you know, what's going to happen to us. You know, wh what are we going to eat? How are we going to live? You know, we don't have to worry about that. Why? Because God will provide for me. God provides everything. In fact, Matthew 6, 26, Jesus said, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? See how your heavenly Father feeds the birds. Look. And how much more will He provide and care for for you. That's what Jesus is saying. And so God provides. 
And this understanding, this confession leads us to uh, give cheerfully. And in our passage today, the word used to describe how richly God provides for his children is so amazing. You know, look at verse 8 again. God is able to make all grace abound so that having sufficiency in all things at all times. Look at, go down verse 10. He will supply and multiply your seed for sowing. Verse 11, you will be enriched in every way. And you know, this isn't just an investment strategy, by the way, you know, like you give and you will gain much more back, right, in return, okay? That's not what he's talking about. Paul isn't teaching the Corinthians to give out of greed, you know, like so that they can get more money, you know, like you invest in God and God will multiply, right? All right. He will, yeah. (laughs) No, Paul is talking about a different value of money. It is completely different from how the world and our culture understands it. Paul is saying, you know, as Christians, we need to understand the value and purpose of money differently. You know, so from the world's perspective, you know, what does it mean to have sufficiency in all things at all times? It may mean that you have enough money uh, in your bank to, to make you comfortable or to live a very happy, comfortable life. Like, you know, it may, in, in the world's perspective, like, it, it may mean that you have enough money to retire early so you could go to Florida. Gosh, Florida is always going to be the retirement <laughs> plan. Right? Yeah. (laughs) Or Jeju-do or somewhere, you know, like, and and do whatever you want. Um, Sufficiency, right, at all all times. To live a comfortable life, you, you know, to have a fortune, to leave behind your children so your children don't have to worry about, you know, that's world's perspective. But for Christians, that's not what it means to have sufficiency. That's not what you know, having enough means. Sufficiency means that we find our contentment not in the material things, but in God himself who is our provider. Being enriched and having all you need does not mean that we have all the money that we want. No, you know, it means that God abound abundantly supplies us with enough for our own needs and also to be generous with others. It's the same thing as having a wealth of generosity even in the midst of poverty. Remember last week's sermon? Just like Macedonian church, you know, you know we talked about it last week. In their great suffering and hardship and yet, you know, they are, there's this wealth of generosity. How is this possible? It is possible when we believe and trust in God who is our provider. A cheerful giver trusts God that when he says, I will take care of you, he will literally And he will indeed take care of you. You know, God will indeed provide for his children. That's what it means. Cheerful giver understands, acknowledge, and trust that God is all sufficient and all gracious at all times. Amen to that? And knowing that makes us cheerful. We want to give. Lord, you got this. You take care of me. And whatever you supply for us, whatever you give to me, gosh, Lord, here, take all of it. Use it for your glory. Because I trust that you got me. But not only that, but number two, a cheerful giver knows that God gives to us for a purpose. 
when God gives to us and provides for us, it's not just so that we can eat and drink and be merry. It's not just so that we can lay up for ourselves here, you know, treasures here on earth. You know, let's go back and read the rest of verse 8, 10, and 11 again. There's this string attached, right? God is able to make all grace abound to you so that, right, having all sufficiency in all things at all times, what? What does it say? You may abound in every good work. He who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, right? And increase the harvest of your righteousness. And in verse 11, you will be enriched in every way for what? To be generous in every way. A cheerful giver knows that God provides for us and blesses us so that we can let that grace overflow to others so that through us God can help and comfort and sustain others. A cheerful giver understands that we have a role to play in the kingdom of God for every good work. God fills us every day with His grace, His comfort, His encouragements, His strength, you know, with hope, with love. Why? Why is He providing all those things? Why is He giving you all those blessings? For what? So that we can do every good work. So that we can serve in every way. So that we can overflow and be generous with our love and care and service in every way. You know, as I was, uh, as I mentioned last week, it, this is a privilege um, to take part in the kingdom of God. Um, and again, Paul makes it clear in verse 12, for the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing many thanksgivings to God. God is giving us this grace so that we can give, you know, we can be His hands and feet to do every good works. And this is an exciting thing. It's a privilege. And, and, and with that, as we are serving, as we're giving, you know, it, 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 this sense of joy overflowing many thanksgivings that we could offer up to God. And in that, you know, we want to give all the more cheerfully. Lord, thank you for giving me all this. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for inviting me to take part in your kingdom. And I will willingly, cheerfully Be generous and and give all the more to others. I will look after the people who are in need, brothers and sisters, churches, and so forth. And lastly, a cheerful giver is one who confesses the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. Your submission comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ. That's what it says. Your submission, where does it come from? It comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us, who gave up his life for us so that we can gain eternal life is what motivates us to submission. Our faith in Jesus Christ motivates us to do this ministry of service for supplying the needs of the saints. Because we know that we have already been given the most amazing gift of all. You know, even when we were most undeserving, by the grace of God, we were given this amazing sacrifice, this amazing love 
Jesus Christ. And so it comes from our confession of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are willing to submit, we're willing to give, and we want to do this cheerfully because of the grace that we've been given. You know, at the end of the day, all this giving, all this act of you know, generosity and all of this, it is really about following Jesus. It's really about following his footsteps. It's really about following what Jesus did. If you remember from last week, what? He became poor, right? He gave, even though he was rich, he gave everything so that he will make you rich. His submission and his obedience to the will of God, and and we follow his footsteps and we submit to him and we, we obey God's word and we follow him. It's really about following Jesus Christ. And you know what? If you really think about it, there is no one who gives more generously, more wholeheartedly, more cheerfully than God himself. You know, our God is the ultimate cheerful giver. Why are we to give cheerfully? Because our God... (laughs) gave cheerfully. He himself gave to us with all his heart. He gave, he poured out. And and isn't that what gospel is all about? God gave his only son. He gave not reluctantly, not under compulsion, but because he loved us, he gave his son, Jesus Christ, cheerfully, willingly, because he loved us so much. He didn't hold back anything. He gave it all because he loved us. From the very beginning of time and when Adam and Eve, they fell and they fall and they fall short of the glory of God and the sin entered and, you know, it should have been done and there, you know, like, all right, end of the history. You're abandoned. You're, you're, you're done. Be dead. <laughs> But you look through the scripture, you see his zeal, his love, his passion, his willingness to restore, to bring back, to save you and me. He poured out. (laughs) You know, are you guys doing uh, your daily Bible these days? If you're not, please, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we're really enjoying it ourselves, uh, especially reading through Second Chronicles. Um, wow, it's, it's a powerful book. Um, and you know what? You, you read through the Second Chronicles. What do you see? <laughs> what do you see? You see many messed up kings. <laughs> you see this kingdom <laughs> Ruin, out of order. You know, in the sanctuary where you're supposed to worship God and you know, offer up sacrifice, you put an idol there and you fall down to the false idol and you look at all those things like, gosh, you know, <laughs> how messed up is that? And guess what? <laughs> what does God do? You know, if I were God, you know, if you were in, the, in his shoes, you know what you're going to do, right? Right, right, there you go. Like, done, out. Kingdom of Israel, Judah, out, done, right? Completely destroy. <laughs> but God, in his rich mercy, gave us his son, He persevered, patiently waiting, 
long enduring. You know, our God, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, gave us His Son to save us, to restore us, to make us rich in the kingdom of God. Dear brothers and sisters, you know, God doesn't ask us to give something that He has not already provided. Uh, He has provided for us in such a rich way. He has given us His Son, Jesus Christ. And isn't that all we need? (laughs) Isn't that good enough? He has given us eternal life. Here in this life, it's short, it's passing away. You know, it's, it's the shadow. You know, flower it blooms and then it falls and it's, this, is, this is what this life is all about. And in Jesus Christ, he gave us eternal life. And in that, what's important? And with that confession and with that faith in Jesus Christ, we are able to give cheerfully because we know that we are only here for a short time and we are here for a purpose and God has given us all these blessings and all the resources or, or you know, little. I don't know, may, you may feel like you don't have anything, but, you know, you have you <laughs> and God wants to use you for his kingdom. And we say, amen to that, Lord. Use me. Here I am for your service. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for inviting me for your kingdom work. And I get to see you in a little while for eternity. And so here on earth, Lord, use it however you want. Is your faith in the gospel being reflected or expressed in your giving? Are you submitting to the Holy Spirit who moves our hearts towards others? The grace, the love, the strength, the blessing, you know, God pours out over you. You know, are you letting that flow out to others? Or are you just keeping it to yourself like, this is all mine, this grace is all mine, this love from the Lord is all mine. No, he has given us and he called us to be the salt and light. He called us to go out and share this wonderful news to others. Are you letting that flow out to others, to people who are in need, the people who are suffering? Are you doing it out of trust and obedience to God, knowing that he will provide and and with that I am confident that when I give all the more, he will maybe give more, not (laughs) in that way, so that we could give more. You know, I pray that the surpassing grace of God that we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ, this inexpressible gift that we have, you know, may this move us to love and serve others. I pray that, you know, when we give, when we serve, when we donate, you know, when we volunteer, you know, with whatever gifts you have, whatever resources you have, I pray that you do it cheerfully, willingly, not sparingly, not, you know, uh, but bountifully, not reluctantly, nor under compulsion, but cheerfully. And, you know, our brother, um, CK, you know, he plays the bass. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are lots of you guys that it just happened to be that I, I'm kind of seeing him and because we had this conversation. It's like, you know, Pastor Joe, I'm only here for a short time because I have to go and, you know, but, you know, while I'm here, while I'm here, you know, I would love to uh, serve. I would love to, you know, uh, share my gift and What's his gift? He's the expert in, in Pauline theology. And so what does he do? He's leading a First Corinthians class right now. You know, he's gifted with, you know, playing the bass. And so, he, you know, he's playing the bass. <laughs> uh, 
What do you got? How did God bless you? What are your gifts? Not, you know, oh, Pastor Joe is making me do this. (laughs) But can we like willingly, cheerfully want to give, want to serve, want to volunteer, want to be up here because, you know, we are now, gosh, why are you guys leaving? (laughs) Yanza, Yanja, and Sarah now, you know, had a short conversation with Storm. It's like, maybe I'll be the only one. (laughs) So did God give you gift of singing? Can you sing for him, for his kingdom, willingly, cheerfully, because God has given you this wonderful gift and you just want to use it for his kingdom? You know, gosh, that, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Yeah. And with that, you know, praise team, come up, and, you know, I'm going to close. Um, you know, I, I mentioned last week that Um, we want to prayerfully ask the Holy Spirit to lead us to uh, take part uh, in the serving uh, other church um, during this pandemic. And as Pastor Lou already mentioned during the announcement, you know, we don't have a particular place in mind or church in mind. You know, what's the heart behind this? It's really simple. As we're reading the scripture, and as the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts and, you know, gives us some kind of this vibe, you know, we don't ignore it. We respond to it. We pray and we're like, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to take part? And how do you want me to respond to this scripture? We may be the Macedonian church suffering, on, going through a lot of, you know, crisis. And yes, we are. <laughs> And yet, as they are serving so generously to the suffering church in Jerusalem, you know, we're praying like, yes, it's not easy for us, but Lord, is there any other Jerusalem church, suffering church out there around, you know, our neighborhood? How can we respond to your word? And it's really, it's really that. If you remember last year, or sorry, this year, um, in spring, um, on Easter Sunday, uh, we did a special Easter offering. And uh, we said that it would be used uh, and it would be set aside uh, to help those who are in need among our church members. Um, Again, we didn't know who we're going to serve, how we're going to do it, but we said, you know, um, as a as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, you know, can we support and help any, uh, anyone who's suffering? And can this resurrecting power, you know, this grace that we have, you know, can we, can we share this with others who are suffering, who are going through hardship? And can that small, um, you know, offering can this be used for them to wake up and get on their feet and you know continue to move forward you know like and so we we start off that way and a lot of you guys um took part in it and gave offering and you know what in in, in due time god has given us the opportunity and we are able to serve some of our members who are suffering and going through hardship and we're able to give and saying that it is from the special uh, uh, offering that we collected from the uh, uh, from our Easter service. I, I think it's going to be similar this time too. Um, you know, don't think about who we're going to give, um, but if the Spirit is moving your heart, then just respond. Simply respond. And it doesn't. We're not talking about pay a lot you know it's like none of that right it's not about how much it's about the heart and your willingness to respond to God's word Um, after the service last week some people actually came up to me and said oh I have a church in mind 
and somebody texts me and said, you know, I have church uh, in mind and that I know that they are going through hardship. And, you know, please continue to uh, provide. And we are thinking locally. You know, there are many global churches out there, but we want to serve in our community. Any, you know, uh, and, and if possible, we want to serve an international church because a lot of Korean churches um, you know, our Suyongno church is supporting and helping too. So, you know, I'm thinking, what are the, the areas that is kind of, you know, um, under, you know, not, not seen? And I'm thinking maybe, you know, we have some international uh, churches around this neighborhood. If you know, please, you know, Kakao me, talk to Pastor Lu, me, um, or, and, and let us know. And we will prayfully um, you know, hear about their situations and and you know, with whatever we have, uh, we will support. But that's just a collectively. But as individually, um, I want you guys to respond to God's word today. At an individual level, how can we take part in the kingdom of God? How can we give cheerfully? With whatever gifts, whatever blessing that we've given, how can we, you know, look to others in a per- on a personal level? What does that look like? Uh, I, I pray that the Spirit, Holy Spirit will reveal to you, m- make you know, um, and that, that He will give you the strength, power to actually respond and to live out whatever that, that heart that he gives you I pray that you, you, you respond to that today's response song is um, you know a song that we already know we know very well and it's, it's an old hymn and, um, but if you <laughs> read the lyrics it's really not simple it's not an easy commitment but can this be our prayer after hearing this word and as we're singing this song and can you say Lord the song that I'm singing right now this is my prayer Um, take my life and let it be use it for your glory let's all stand and sing this song